Namaste. How's it going? I'd like to share with you an experience I had last night during my meditation. And it has something to do with utilizing the tongue yeah, and positioning the tongue distinctively inside the mouth and then breathing distinctively too. Now, I use this technique regularly during my meditation as my way of mudra, channeling the energy. And a lot of times um, it has led me to samadhi. And last night I had the samadhi too. All right, our tongue is really a powerful physical tool for us to magnetize and unify our you know, energetic forces, our pranic forces. And by um, placing the tongue and yeah, the frontal tip on the surface against the back of the upper teeth, yeah, where the teeth ends and then the gums start, yeah, not really towards the, na the, the hard palate, just a little bit in front of you know, the back of the teeth, yeah, and then close the lips. You will feel this involuntary suction already, like they're meant to be there actually. Right? And then breathing so lightly and quickly through the process. And the breath is so light, you will only feel the breath brush yeah, the frontal yeah, part of the nasal cavity, not even the lungs. And the lungs remain like, the lungs are not breathing, the lungs remain passive, but you know you're breathing yeah, because you're feeling the breath and then you are not gasping, you're not straining. And then you're not moving at all. So you're still, you're steady, so you don't need as much energy. And so that's enough for you to sustain the vital organs. Yeah. But definitely if you are a beginner, yeah, this technique is not for you because you need to do many, many yeah, years of preparation, opening the body and strengthening your cardiorespiratory system for you to be able to sustain this practice. But if you've been doing, for example, many years of asana, pranayama already, you might be ready for this technique. It's not the Nabhu Mudra. Yeah, because the Nabhu Mudra, you need, to, you need to really press the surface of the tongue against the heart palate and then you breathe fully yeah but this one is a different one it's like a variation but so subtle you know, your breath becomes like little ones little ones yeah fluttering the breath yeah and then what happens there uh, since you're not breathing to your full capacity yeah your brain yeah um experiences a mild compression Right, compression of the brain. And then when the brain is compressed, yeah, the soma drips. Yeah, that's, that's the, uh, the function of the energetic anatomy. Once the body is needing yeah, that energy because it's not so used to doing a particular technique, then the brain compensates, the brain supplies. And then the brain compresses, the intracranial pressure uh, increases, therefore the soma drips. And this soma drips will lead to the opening of the nasal cavity inside, yeah, inside. And this will inevitably uh, activate the deeper chakras of the head, particularly the talu, yeah, behind the nasal cavity, yeah, and the ajna chakra, the pineal gland inside, because that's where the, the soma drips. And then you here doing the, the breathing exercise, definitely you're engaging some other subtle components inside and then you bit by bit, yeah, inching because you're doing a suction, right? Yeah, Inch, uh, bit by bit, your energy rises. Yeah. It's just like you're sipping, for example, you're narrowing the pathway, you make the pathway narrow, therefore, yeah, energy rises through that narrow gap because our body energy rises. And then this leads to what? Yeah, the subtle lifting of your Agni, the fire, and the soma drifts, and then this will lead to the opening of the nasal cavity behind. Yeah, and then when these two forces blend, yeah, your Shushumna Nadi will just inevitably open up, and this will lead to yeah, both energies, the unified force, Agni, the Prana, the Kundalini, and then the soma, yeah, the dripping down, which contains the Prana. Um, the vital life force, the passive prana, and they combine, they become like magnetized and electrified, and they stimulate the brain. And this leads to samadhi. Yes. So doing this technique, yeah, will require us to really hold the body still. 
Yeah, because the moment the body is still or the body moves, yeah, the autonomic functions take over and then you lose it. Yeah, so if you want to try this technique, I would suggest do it lying down. So you preserve your energy with your head slightly elevated. That's how I learned it first. I you know, was lying down. Yeah. Actually, I didn't learn it. It just happened. Yeah, I just, it just felt natural doing that. Yeah. And yeah. And I just you know, grew the practice and until now, yeah, it's growing. And this, uh, it, it, this will really make you practice yeah, more efficient, more practical, but you, because you don't need to do the long hours of pranayama, kumbhaka, sipinasana. Last night I wasn't doing yoga at all. I didn't do yoga at all yesterday. And yeah, just lie down there and yeah, it happened. So little tiny breaths, yeah, sealing the surface of the tip of the tongue against the yeah, behind, yeah, the upper teeth, eyes closed, and little tiny breaths. Good. 